of the Adventurous Joe Show, the Adventurous Joe himself, Joseph Michaels! Hey everyone, and welcome to Season 4 of the Adventurous Joe Show. We're back, we're better than ever, and you will not believe some of the additions we've got coming to this year. To the rest of this year. Uh-huh, it's going to be some big stuff. I meant, back better than ever? Who else could say that? Even he's even Bumblebee's excited. I mean, um, I mean Goldbug. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, anyways, we've got big things in store. We've got the annual loot, our monthly loot crate unboxing. Uh, for the for the September loot crate, we have our video game review of Destiny for the PS3. Now I saw Angry Joe's review while I was on my little mini vacation, and I was just blown away by it. I was just like. He hates it this much? It's this bad for him? Wow. Mm. We've also got our kids, our first ever kids review of Disney's Frozen. This is a new edition. Like I said, there's new additions coming to the Adventurous Joe show. But at the, at the end of season three, we premiered one of them known as the Topic of the Week. And uh, that's uh, just one of the many new things we're adding to this season of the Adventurous Joe Show. Okay, also, <clears throat> we have our movie review for Teenagers with Attitude. Uh, it's a Power Ranger based fan film that was uh, took a long time to make, and I watched it while I was on my little vacation and decided, okay, if my cousin Tommy's uh, sanctuary quite a conundrum doesn't show up, this is getting reviewed. Okay, and also, Power Ranger news, I got some stuff to tell you about. Ooh, mama, do I got some stuff to tell you about. And our anime review of Attack on Titan. Woo! Oh, and to get back on topic of things, Destiny, I've got a special little gift for some, for some of you. If you decide to play along, that is. <laughs> uh, after the review, you might not want to. <laughs> and also... Our Cosplayer of the Week segment is back. So, let's get started with the Loot Crate Unboxing, coming up next. And this one is going to be a doozy. Okay, let's get started here. First off, Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks. This will make your mouth explode with flavor. <laughs> oh, look at this. A little Star Trek treble. How do you like that? You want one in your own? Yeah, get one if you got September's Loot Crate. Oh, mama. Let's see what else we got in here. A little Star Wars magnet. How you like them apples? A little Star Wars magnet. Okay. Ooh, science fiction vinyl figure. Shows on the back here. Yeah, look at all these other ones on the back. Huh, let's see what we got. It's what's his name from Firefly. Okay. Alright. How cute. Alright. Also, let's see what else we got. The as always, the loot crate pin. See that? This one is titled Galactic. Galactic. <gasps> Holy Mary, Mother of God. Look at that. Reaction figures. Alien. Holy Mary, Mother of God, the alien action figure. And look at that, it shows you on the back the other ones. Holy crap. There's Ripley, Kane, Ash, and Dallas, and then you got the alien. Ooh, mama. I'm going to save this for somebody for a Christmas gift. 
Okay, what else we got in here? Oh, hello. <laughs> the box is going away from me. Okay, fall into savings. Ooh, fall into savings. What do we got in the fall into savings? Oh, look at that. Gamefly, Gunner, Squid Grip, Origin, and Astro. Hmm, look at that. Fall into savings stuff, huh? Okay. Alright. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, hang on. We got more. We have more. I blast it. Really? Hang on a second. I just thought that was a cardboard insert. But apparently it's a mini poster. <laughs> look at that! Han Solo and Carbonite! Oh, oh, look at that, mini poster. If I had a way to hang that sucker right now, it'd be on the back of here. <laughs> okay, let's see. And always, look at with the new design for the Loot Crate box. Look at that. It's got its own little mini hanger. <laughs> An R2 unit. Ah, that's so neat. That is so neat. Now, if you want to get in on the, this Loot Crate goodies... Ooh, look, money. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The money of Firefly. Space Bucks. <whistles> Space Bucks are cool. Space Bucks are nice. Space Bucks are always nice. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, hello. Halo Escalation Voucher. I guess it's to download the comic. Yeah, from the lead writer of Halo 4. Now ongoing, an ongoing series. Okay. That's what I thought. It was from the comic. And, as always, the booklet for each month. Galactic is the title. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> then you got the, everyone from last month's Loot Crate. Ninja Turtle crazy people. Brown Coats Guide to Firefly. I like that. A little mini guide to Firefly. Now this is the what the Mega Crate looks like. And uh, don't bother asking about it or entering it. It's already over with. <laughs> and then you got the Verse. Which is a mini thing that uh, Loot Crate did. Then you got the, the thing that shows what you get in each what you're getting in your loot crate for that month. Very nice. Now, like I said, if you want to get in on this epic goodness and stuff and be a part of it, follow the link down below to lootcrate.com and get and enter the next code is fear. Enter that code and you get $3 off your first month of loot crate. Woo! How awesome is that? Also, uh, tell them the Adventurous Joe Show sent you host Joseph Michaels. And who knows, they might give you a discount. I don't know. We never got into it if finding out if they approved a partnership with me or not. So either way, I'm letting people know about them and going from there. Okay, now, while I put all this little goodies away, let's get ready for our video game review of Destiny. Coming up next. This game took years of development and stuff, and so many delays and so on and so forth, that when it finally was being released, holy Mary Mother of God, it just blew people away. At E3 2013 last year, it really blew people away. When they heard it was coming out this year, unbelievable. People were just so excited about it and incredibly great about it. I meant, let's take a look at some of that gameplay footage. You ain't gonna believe what how this game plays. It's amazingly well done and I, there's not much more to say on that, you know? It's just like a mix of Mass Effect and Halo. It goes from first person to third person all the time. And it was actually pretty nice because in the first person perspective you can run around doing uh 
stuff on the tower. The tower is the safe haven on Earth that is for all guardians, which is your character. Doesn't matter if you become a titan, a hunter, or um, I forget what that last one is supposed to be. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter on which one you go to. If you, oh, Vanguard, excuse me, <laughs> Vanguard. There's the Vanguard, the Titan, and the Hunter. Okay, either way, the the graphics amazingly well done. This world beautifully well done. Everything they did for Destiny beautifully well done. The gameplay, however, a little repetitive. Very repetitive in some cases. Like the same enemies over and over and over and over again. I meant some get harder to kill as your level progresses. Now, one person has already been cited, cited as saying that they've reached level 30. Woo! Level 30? Are you insane, man? Are you very insane? <laughs> Either way, the gameplay, phenomenal. I loved playing through this. I loved the multiplayer aspect of it all, including the multiplayer aspect of it all. Teaming up with other players to take down these people and, and everything. I was doing a lot better than a couple of them, and, and everybody was just like, you take the lead, you do it. <laughs> I was like, this is why years of shooters and all that stuff pays off. All right. <laughs> Either way, the gameplay, awesome as hell. I loved playing this game. Now, there's been times I will I was ready to start ripping my hair out over it and everything. And, uh, no, it's not why I've got short hair now. <laughs> Either way, the gameplay, like I said, phenomenal. You, multiplayer aspect, very incredible. Your guy just mm, leads these people around, starts protecting them, and so on and so forth. Depending on your level progression, some of them were different than me. One was like a level 26 I teamed up with, and we were just whooping ass everywhere. I mean, it was fun to do when you're able to compete that at that level and stuff, fighting alongside these other players and everything. Now, the Crucible... That's another story in itself, because people that are like level 25, level 26 and shit, they are going to be harder to kill. There are other players that you're fighting against, and they're going to be harder to kill. <laughs> However, the gameplay, kind of short. The storyline, a little offbeat. It sometimes didn't make incredible sense to it all, and started off beautiful. It started off a great part, and you figure, okay, it's going to be an incredibly great storyline. No. The storyline, a little off-putting, and uh, I gotta say right now, the other part and aspect to it all is the fact that it was too short. Even doing the, the side missions and stuff, the, the, game, the game is just too short. And it turns out... Bungie and Activision have decided they're going to put out two expansion packs that are um, bring out two more exclusive maps or something like that. More uh, story mission based things. And I'm like, why didn't you just put it in the game to begin with? Are you kidding me? 35 bucks for the expansion pack. Unbelievable. Not cool, Bungie. Not cool, Activision. Either way, I'm not going to be a louse, and I'm not going to sit there and say the game developers were idiots and so on and so forth. Whoever made this idea was an idiot. No, that's not me. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't bash on that kind of stuff. However, I do bash on the fact that I got to pay 60 freaking dollars to play a game that's only half done. Okay? And then you expansion pack it into two different other things and expect people to pay us an additional $35. Oh. Okay, anyways, final verdict for Destiny. Well, I love the gameplay. It was incredibly well done. Multiplayer aspect off the hook when you can team with great players and everything. Protecting your teammates and stuff. The Crucible, excellent. It's very cool to play in the Crucible. I mean, even if you die in the Crucible, it's fun to still play it. Because you're playing against other players. They're all having a good time. It's not like, oh, you son of a bitch, you fucked me over. No, 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 no. It was fun to do. 
But the storyline aspect, however, needed more, okay? It should have been a longer, a little longer for a game and stuff. Uh, by the time I reached the end boss and stuff, I wasn't even close to level 20. I meant the end boss battle with the main shutting down the heart of darkness and everything else was just insane. But at the same time, it could add more. Either way, final verdict for Destiny? Well, Angry Joe's show went with a 6 out of 10. I'm going to at least hit below the belt and say 8 out of 10. I'm not going to hit way below the belt on it. I'm just going to say an 8 out of 10. Because the gameplay, great. Storyline aspect could have been more. The game, the game itself could have had those expansions added into the game to make it a full-fledged game instead of half done. Okay? Either way, final verdict is an 8 out of 10 on Destiny. And we're also holding a contest for mm, Destiny. Check this out. We got this from Bungie and Activision as a uh, little promotional tool for Destiny. And I just got back from my mini vacation in time to mm, tell you all about it that we're going to be holding a contest giveaway on it. If you want to be a part of it, let us know down in the comments below. If Or write us at King Atlas on Twitter at King Atlas 1977. And, or write us on Facebook. We'll be posting a link on Facebook there too. Or posting a thing on Facebook as well. Either way, let us know if you want to be a part of the contest. Because this baby is going away fast. As soon as it gets won by whoever. <laughs> Either way. Now, let's move on to the premiere of our kids' review for Frozen. Coming up next. It's time now for the premiere of our first ever kids' review. And our first one we're reviewing... Now, this is a new segment we're going to be doing uh, every other week on the Adventurous Joe Show. Um, sometimes I might even do one outside of the Adventurous Joe Show. You'll just have to keep your eyes open for it. Either way, this is a thing that's going to let your children know uh, if this is a good thing or a bad thing to watch. Okay? We do, we're do. we going to be reviewing kids' movies and kids' TV shows to let you parents know out there if this is something you want your children to watch. And if not, then... Let us know down in the comments below, you know. Voice your opinion. That's what the comments are there for, people. Either way, our first ever kids review is Frozen by Disney. Disney's Frozen was beautifully well done. Now, I don't care about what the critics are saying and everything else. This is my opinion on this show. Because my whole family loves it. Even my dad. My dad doesn't like cartoons of any kind. He always complains about how they're so stupid and so on and so forth. But we expect he's in his 60s. Either way, he loved Frozen. He loves watching it again and again whenever it's on. Apparently, it, it's got a great storyline to it. The animation, very well done. Disney did an incredible job with this. However, it's, you know, it's great. It's just not what everyone else would expect it to be. Like, for the fact that, um, and spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but I'm gonna let you know right now. The only way Elsa saves her sister Anna is by the fact that she has to perform an act of true love to unfreeze a frozen heart. To unthaw a frozen heart. Either way, it's the, it got people in an uproar because they're, they were saying it's, a. Uh, uh, too uh, gay-like or whatever, and I was like, "How is that gay-like?" I mean, seriously, you're you're siblings. You care for each other. Yeah, there's a lot of siblings out there that don't give a f care about each other. <clears throat> Either way, Disney's Frozen, well done. The music, beautifully well done. Especially the song "Let It Go." It's become like my most favorite song now. I had to look. I had to look it up on iTunes just to download it and get it. I love that music. I mean, the music in it—it's it, beautiful. The storyline, well done. 
the plot, the plot twists, the characters, everything was incredibly well done. And I still couldn't believe the woman that voices Elsa did the that singing. Uh, I mean, Anna even, the girl that plays Anna, did the singing and stuff like that. It was well done. I meant seriously well done. Even Olaf's song uh, about snowmen in summer. It was funny to see how he's a snowman and he doesn't seem to understand. In the summertime, he will melt away. <laughs> it was just funny, you know, to watch this movie. And it was great too. I meant beautiful storyline as well. I meant no stupidness to it. Nothing that would make parents cringe. I meant I don't get where all the critic cr stuff is coming from on this. But uh, <clears throat> either way, my final verdict, and we're highly recommending you check it out if you have not seen it as of yet. We are high here at the Adventure Show Show. We are highly recommending you check out Frozen. Disney's Frozen, we're giving it a 10 out of 10. Storyline, incredibly well done. Music, very well done. I mean, the, even the instrumental stuff, when it's doing the whole, um, like, uh, the battles and stuff like that. Or like when the snow, the big abominable snow monster was chasing them and stuff. The music, incredibly well done. And the storyline, incredible. I mean, the, it started off with them as siblings and showed up as uh, they progressed as growing up and stuff like that and uh, like I said this show incredibly well done bravo to Disney on a great job for this one I mean I saw Wreck-It Ralph I saw mm, Brave but this one just blew me away and I loved every moment of it and uh, like I said Olaf's song funny funny as can be I mean it, even your children would be laughing that uh, knowing that, you know, he's a snowman and we all know what happens to snow when the summer comes. <laughs> okay, anyways, our final verdict for our first ever kids review of Disney's Frozen is a 10 out of 10. And we're giving it a highly recommended seal of approval for all you parents and kids out there who might not have seen it yet. Check it out and... Let us know what you think of it if you have seen it and down in the comments down below. Let us know what you have thought about it and go from there. Okay, now let's move on to our movie review. Coming up next. quite a conundrum but it never arrived now when it does I will have a full review on it for you okay but until then we've got another independent film director's great debut of teenagers with attitude now this was a fan-based Power Rangers film remake it's a reboot of sorts and uh, the character casting all different I mean, even Jason is an African-American instead of Zack being the African-American. Now there's a twist. Kimberly wearing glasses and uh, being like a smart smart girl of sorts. And uh, even Billy is different. Trini is, uh, isn't Asian. I mean, this girl is either like uh, a mix between American Latino or so on and so forth. Either way. Uh, the girls, phenomenal. The boys, great job. The guys did, the guys and gals alone did an incredible job with this. The director behind it did an incredible job with it. I loved every moment of this. I can't understand why Saban and Jason David Frank put it down. I meant seriously. They should be grateful that Power Ranger fans out there are still willing to go the distance and mm, do stuff like this. Either way. This movie was well done. Very well done. Even though it's only like 30 minutes long. I mean, it's still a good movie. It was a mini movie of sorts. And Rita Repulsa and everything, it was just well done. Bravo, well done. I mean, seriously. 
And the the storyline, incredibly well done. I, I mean, I loved how every moment reached up to the point. And if you haven't seen it yet, spoiler alert, don't watch the, this part of the review and skip it. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you right now that they morph at the end of the of this of this it, they do the whole it's morphing time thing you know and i was just like oh mama of pearl i love this and now teenagers with attitude number two is going to be coming out sometime uh probably next year or maybe a year or two down the road i don't know either way the this i cannot wait for because we are supposed to see power rangers in action Woo -hoo -hoo! love it either way this film, I am highly recommending you check it out, and we're giving it the biggest, badass seal of approval I can slap on it. That's right. <laughs> Either way, Teenagers with Attitude, a Power Rangers fan film, I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. It was well done. The actors did an incredible job. That uh, The recasting of certain characters... Being, uh, you know, that Jason's an African-American now, instead of Zach being the African-American, and so on and so forth. You know, just the whole backwards scenario thing. It was beautiful to do this. I mean, rebooting it like this was a great idea. I mean, it could have been done this way originally, but back then when the 90s came out and everything, when the 90s came about and Power Rangers hit the American shores and stuff... People didn't see that a Red Ranger could be African American. I meant seriously, we were in the 90s for God's sake and still they had this whole racial profiling crap. Uh, either way, I'm letting you know right now, Teenagers with Attitude, you find it under Zordon of Eltar on eBay, find it any, I think you can find it anywhere or just type in TWA or T... Teenagers with Attitude. Either way, the movie, well done. Incredibly well done. And if you can talk to the director, he's on his Facebook page, let him know how much you love this film. It was great. I meant very great. And we're, it, come on, we're at the Adventurous Joe show here, and we're slapping a badass seal of approval on it, then you know it's good. Okay, and either way, our final verdict upon it, we're going with a 10 out of 10, baby. This movie earned it. A 10 out of 10. It needed to be showed. It needed to be told. And it was beautiful how it did it differently. I mean, Rita Repulsa, not an old woman like mm, Sorceress. I mean, she was like this young woman of sorts. And it was incredibly well done, like I said. Either way, our final verdict at the Adventurous Show Show for the movie review of Teenagers with Attitude is... A 10 out of 10, and our biggest, badass seal of approval we can smack up on it. Seriously. <laughs> okay, now, let's move on to our mm, telling you about segment. Coming up next. Okay, people, I told you there's huge changes coming to the Adventurous Joe show this year. And we are in the midst of them. You've just seen another one of them, kids, the kids' review. And back at the end of season three, you saw the premiere of the Adventurous Joe's topic of the week. Now, other things we have in store coming up this year is cooking with the Adventurous Joe. I'm going to be taking you, uh, taking and showing you. How I do some of my favorite dishes like ramen noodles with taco burger and stuff like that. And uh, maybe visit a few of the places I like to eat at and when I go out and stuff. And uh, stuff like that. Then we got Photographer of the Week. Now this one I've been dawdling with and doing things with for quite some time but I never got around to actually finishing it. This one we're going to introduce you to photographers like uh, Jerry Kramer and so on and so forth. There's a lot of them out there that do a lot of cosplay shoots, modeling shoots. I mean, these guys and women, excuse me, guys and gals, do an incredible job on their fo their photography and stuff. Even David Love, Dave Love Photography, I think it's David Love Photography, either way. That guy does incredible work, especially with uh, Heather 13, was it 1313 13 or something like that? And, uh, Jennifer Ann, who um, 
he, like I said, he does incredible work. Mm -hmm. He does amazing backgrounds for them and stuff like that, making them look more real than that you would normally see things, okay? Also, moving on to that subject, we have Director of the Week, in which we're going to be presenting you with uh, directors of movie and TV shows, okay? Some really great directors out there like J.J. Abrams and yes, Michael Bay is one of those too. I mean, he's okay, okay? But he just keeps directing crap. <laughs> That's my opinion. You don't have to voice it on it if you want to or don't want to. And throwback of the week. That's when we're going to take you in time, baby. We're going to be showing you some of the oldest TV shows, talking to you about some of the oldest TV shows and movies, and uh, some of the events that took place back in like a 1950 or 1960 or 1970 and so on and so forth. I mean, some of these are before I was ever born, but I've seen all the movies and stuff like that growing up. Incredible stuff. I've got a hit. We've even got, we're going to be even doing like a flashback to the 80s kind of thing. Uh, going back in time to the 90s and so on and so forth. Either way, that's uh, another part of our show. And another one we got coming up is Story Time with the Adventurous Joe. Now this one I'm going to do for the kids because uh, there's a lot of times parents get on there and they'll they'll find little things for the kids to, to listen to and stuff like that. This one I'm going to read some children's books, uh, some books, story books I have on hand and everything. And, you know, this one is for kids. It's going to be meant for them to hear a nice story and see the pictures in the book and so on and so forth. It's, like I said, it's going to be awesome for the kids. And our final piece that I'm going to be starting on my own Facebook group or page on, and we're calling it The Cosplayer Force. Now this is going to be open to any cosplayer that wants to join it. They can display their pics on there, show them off to everyone, let them know who's the, who the photographer is that did their pics and so on and so forth. I am loving this whole idea. I can't wait to get it posted up there, started, and show everyone off and show every one of them how it's done. I mean, already we're adding Ivy Doom Kitty to it, Dave Turner Age, um, Spencer Doe. These are some of our Cosplayers of the Week and former Cosplayers of the Week. They, they are going to be a part of a huge thing that we're adding into Facebook. And I can't wait for the fans to get on board and other Cosplayers to join in as well. Okay, and that's about it for our Season 4 add-ons. We are going to be adding some incredible stuff. Every other week it's going to be on the Adventurous Joe Show. And uh, every time we're doing the Cosplayer of the Week, whoever gets chosen for the Cosplayer of the Week is automatically entered into the Cosplayer Force. So it's going to be an incredible ride, and I can't wait to get it started. Okay, now that that's all out of the way, let's move on to our Power Ranger news coming up next. Go, go, Power Rangers! Go, go, Power it's time now for our Power Ranger news segment, and boy do I got some stuff to tell you about. One, Legendary Megazord... <sighs> legendary Megazord. <laughs> Sorry. The Legendary Morpher, Deluxe Morpher, is, been, is being re-released. However, it's going to be a huge key pack. And, uh... <sighs> that huge key pack's gonna have doubles of what you already got, and stuff you don't have. And they're going to charge you 80 freaking dollars for it. 80 dollars, Bandai? Really? It's not worth 80 dollars. Some of these you could have just, you could have packed it in with all additional figure key packs or keys that have never been released yet. Make it a whole different key set altogether. Or pack it in with, you know, I mean, this is stupid! This is stupid! It's incredibly stupid! You could have packed it in with the uh, Pink Samurai Ranger, or mm, the Yellow Samurai Ranger, so on and so forth. You know, make it more interesting! Don't pack it in with the Super Mega Force keys again! Oh. 
Like, we don't have enough of the Red Ranger and the Blue Ranger keys. Or the Green Ranger key. So on and so forth. And then packing it in with SPD key and the Green Ranger key that's already been released and stuff. What is wrong with you people? <sighs> Either way, all I got to say on that is that, you know, don't waste your money. Eventually, if you want to, buy the, buy the thing and stuff. But because $80 for that is ridiculous. And I mean $80 for that deluxe legendary morpher with the keys. Some keys you don't have. Okay. Some keys you do have already. Waste of money. Seriously. You're wasting money on something you probably won't even be able to get rid of. <sighs> Trading them off. Selling them off. Whichever you do. It don't, it's just ridiculous. Bandai, bravo on being stupid for that matter. I mean, come on. I love Power Rangers more than anything. And you guys screw up like this. I mean, this is ridiculous. I can understand charging the Dragon Zord $80, but come on. This deluxe morpher with these keys because there's only maybe about six or seven different keys and the rest are all repack. Ugh. 80 bucks ain't worth it. I'll tell you that right now. $80, not worth it. Okay. Anyways, other Power Ranger news I got for you. That um, the Legendary War has been leaked online. A French uh, TV channel got to preview it before we did. And guess what? They put somebody posted it all over the internet, all over YouTube. It's been split into bits and pieces and stuff, but you can see almost the whole show. And I'll tell you right now, my excitement level for it still up there, but at the same time, kind of disappointed. Seriously, if this is how we're going to have to expect it here in America come November, uh, forget it. It's just ridiculous. I still say they should have split it into five parts, using the final five episodes, make it into a five-part thing, building up into it. This just feels rushed. I mean, seriously. I mean, I don't speak French that well and everything, but, you know, a little parlez vous Francais, zucken sie Deutsch, and so on and so forth. But, come on. This is ridiculous. It felt rushed. It felt incredibly lost on the concept and then the Power Rangers raising their hands into the air and then just disappearing? What? Did we just destroy them all or something? Or they just destroyed themselves? I mean, in the Japanese Sentai version, I seen how that happened and stuff. And uh, it brought about the, the, ra the Super Mega Force Rangers, which they called the Pirate Rangers. Unreal. Uh, it's just unreal. Either way, I'm telling you right now, Super Mega Force, if you don't get with the program, this show is going to be worthless to everyone. They're all going to sit there and say how they don't like it anymore. I'm, at, I'm understanding how it's going and stuff like that because certain brands can't be used. Saban did this and so on and so forth. And you know what? I get so sick of these Saban haters, okay? It's bad, it's bad directing. It's bad writing. I mean, come on. I could have wrote a better story for this one. Either way, I guess we'll just have to wait till November and see how it actually all plays out. Anyways, you can still find the clips online. Look, look up on your PR Samurai cast and you'll find all the clips on there. They're all in French, some are in English, so on and so forth. They're clips of upcoming episodes or episodes for the final part of the show or series and so on and so forth. Either way, check them out, and if you already seen them, let us know down in the comments below what you think about them, and then we'll go from there. Either way, uh, keep the comments at a minimum, okay? Don't sit there and post vulgar everything and so on and so forth. We don't tolerate that, okay? We tolerate so much, and that's about it, okay? Because sometimes parents and kids look at these things, and we don't want people's comments on there saying about eat a whatever you know okay and that's it for our power ranger news for this week uh now let's move on to our anime review 
Coming up next. was like Jack the Giant Killer on steroids! I mean, seriously. And the main character, Aaron, turning into one of those giants and then finding out down the road, and I'm gonna let you know right now, spoiler alert, if you have not seen the series, because uh, otherwise skip this part of the review, because I'm gonna let you know right now. The female Titan was one of the freaking elite um, military police. And her name was Annie! Oh my god! The blonde chick that was so damn mysterious and everything, and kind of hot, she, tur she turned out to be the female Titan! I was like, what the holy crap! And they they couldn't figure it out. But the minute Aaron seen her eyes... Uh, not Aaron. Uh, trying to remember his name now. Either way... The minute he saw her eyes, he just figured it out, you know? And it's just like unbelievable. They figured out who she is without even trying. What the hell? Now you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is Attack on Titan? Okay, Attack on Titan is about Titans. These are big, freaking, humanoid looking people. I mean, seriously, I don't know if you call them people. They don't talk. They just eat. They kill and eat. That's all about they do. I mean, now in the case of uh, Aaron and Annie, they never did that stuff when they turned into their Titan forms. Which, Aaron's Titan form was explained kind of, but Annie's wasn't. And I was just kind of disappointed in that. I was like, okay, there better be a season two to this whole thing because this is ridiculous. Because it ends, if you watch the ending credits all the way through, you'll see that the wall crumbles and there's a titan inside it. And it's like, what the hell? Either way, Attack on Titan, unbelievable show. I mean, the storyline felt, you know, kind of disturbed at first. Like, you know, the fact that, oh, you can't do nothing against these damn titans. They eat you like cattle and so on and so forth. Aaron's character kind of off the beaten path. That guy just went from, like, I can do this, I can do that, and stuff like that, to almost being like a whiny little bitch. And I was like, are you kidding me? This, this guy just went from, like, wanting to be the hero to stopping the titans, killing them all for what they did to her, his family and stuff. To finding out he becomes one of them and starts screaming and crying and, and so on and so forth. I'm like, Ugh, God. He couldn't even control his Titan form a couple of times either. And that almost gets uh, Mikasa and a few others killed because of that. I meant seriously. The show, incredible. I meant the, the storyline, kind of disturbing but off the beaten path at times as well. I mean, it kind of gets you confused. Like, how in the world did Annie become a Titan? How is it she's a Titan? And they never explained that part. Flashbacks take place about her dad or something like that, or grandfather, and so on and so forth. But it's never explained about how she's able to turn into a titan. Now, Aaron's explanation is a little more simple. He thinks it's got something to do with something his dad injected him with before disappearing. And because and the 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 answers to it all lie within the ruins of his home. Okay? That was more of an explanation I could handle. But Annie's case? No. Her explanation was kind of dull and off the beaten of the path, if you ask me. Either way, I'll tell you right now, Attack on Titan, we're giving it the badass seal of approval, and we're also giving it uh, an 8 out of 10. It was good, but something could have been better explained in the story. Okay, like the fact that, like I said, 
It's never explained how Annie is able to turn into a Titan. Unless she got injected with the same shit as Aaron did. And, uh, some of the character development as well. I mean, Levi, he's like coming like a cold calculated monster at times and stuff. That he don't care about human life, you know. He don't care about the dead bodies and stuff. Leave them behind and so on and so forth. And uh, everyone thinks of him as this cold-hearted bastard, but really, he's tr he's just trying to keep his emotions in check, because if he gets emotional, he's going to lose it, you know. He would lose it just like the rest of them started doing. And the one guy, I mean, come on, there was this one guy that, uh, I guess he's supposed to be a lieutenant or a captain or something, he was getting ready to kill Aaron and stuff, and they did nothing to him! Nothing! Ugh. I'd have shot the dumb motherfucker. I'm serious. I would have shot the dumb motherfucker to make an example and say to them, this is what happens to cowards who want to commit treason. Like I said, unbelievable. The storyline, incredible. The animation, great. Okay. The plots, so on and so forth, it, call, it, it could have all been better explained, you know? Like in the fact that, you know... I just can't get past it. Annie is a Titan, but she's never, it never gives any back -ish background on why she's a Titan. How she became a Titan. Alright. Either way, our final verdict for the anime review is an 8 out of 10. Attack on Titan, we're giving you the badass seal of approval because some of the action in it, especially when Aaron becomes a Titan himself, is incredible. He is just whooping ass on these damn other titans and stuff. And I was just loving every moment of it. And watching him kill these suckers over and over again. And uh, some of the characters, a little wacky. I mean, the, the, one, the one woman that is titan crazy. She researching on them and uh, experimenting with them and stuff like that. She just like foams at the mouth at this kind of stuff. And I'm like... She is off her rocker. And uh, what's her name? Constantly eating and drinking and stuff like that. I mean, some of the characters aren't hard to remember. And some are just like, uh, they're going to be dead soon. Why do I bother? Because <laughs> there's no real plots to them and stuff. No story to them. I mean, it's ridiculous how the series came about. But at the same time, still an incredible great anime series. All right. Now, let's move on to our final part of the show, the Cosplayer of the Week segment. Coming up next. And this next little inductee into the Cosplayers Hall of Fame is none other than Lindsay Elaine. Now this little lady had a little accident down over the weekend um, at Al uh, Alamo City Comic Con in Texas. And uh, it's mostly due to the fact that her costume had something to do with uh, uh, a chemical in it or something. that uh, You know, she bought it from overseas. So, yeah. Go figure on that one. Either way, it made her break out into a horrible rash and everything and to the point where she was having trouble breathing and so on and so forth. And uh, we're glad to hear she's doing much better now. The fans, they all wanted her to become the next cosplayer of the week and said that we love this lady. We want her to be our next cosplayer of the week and so on and so forth. So we did it. We brought her in as the next cosplayer of the week. And she's autumn when we start the cosplayer force. She's automatically a member. Why you like that stuff? Right there with Spencer Doe. I think those two are dating. <laughs> Either way, she's an incredibly great model, pinup model at that, and uh, an incredibly great cosplayer. And we were going to let you sh check out her pics, and we'll see you for the final part of the show. Enjoy.
Adventurous Joe Show. I'm glad we're back for season four, and I can't wait to do all these big changes and stuff and make this show more incredible for all of you, including us. Don't forget to like the video, comment, and subscribe. We're up to 65 subscribers now. How do you like that? When I ended season three, I said we were only at 60. Five new subscribers while I was on vacation. How do you like that? <laughs> Either way, let's build up those subscribers. And if you got stuff to say, put it down in the comments down below. Want to be a part of Loot Crate every month and get this epic goodness that I showed you earlier? Sign up down below. We've got the link down below. You enter the code word FEAR to get $3 off your first month of Loot Crate. Either way, that's it. I have been your host, The Adventurous Joe, Joseph Michaels. And peace out. May the force be with you. And may the power protect you. We'll see ya.